Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're going through one of my favorite topics, which is an overview of the peripheral nervous system. Now, to start off, we need to understand what the peripheral nervous system is. And basically, it's everything that's not the brain, brainstem, and spinal cord, because we know that this is the central nervous system. The peripheral nervous system are all the nerves that shoot out and away and come back in towards the brain, brainstem, and spinal cord. And so that means you can basically break up these nerves into those of the brain and brainstem, which we term the cranial nerves, and those of the spinal cord, which we term the spinal nerves, which I'll draw up shortly. But there's two functional subdivisions of the peripheral nervous system. First of which is that of the autonomic nervous system. Autonomic sounds like automatic and that's exactly what it is. This is the division of the peripheral nervous system that controls all involuntary things. This may be sensory information coming in from our organs or viscera. It may be information coming out towards our organs and viscera to tell things like our heart to contract. It may tell things like our smooth muscle that line our gastrointestinal tract or our blood vessels or our genitourinary tract to constrict or dilate. Or it may tell some glands to release hormones or chemicals. All these things that we don't consciously control, that's the autonomic division of the peripheral nervous system. The somatic division, soma, somatic, body, these are all the things we do consciously control. So it can bring sensory input in from our periphery, but also send a motor output to things that allow us to consciously move. Basically, our skeletal muscle, muscle attached to bone. So things that allow for me to walk, talk, sing, dance, move, all those types of things, somatic division. But the take home message is, regardless of autonomic or somatic, these particular nerves either shoot out and away or come back into the brain, brainstem and spinal cord. So let's have a look at those. Let's begin with the nerves of the brain and brainstem called the cranial nerves. They are paired and there's 12 of them. They're paired because they come out and go back in to either side of the brain and brainstem. And you can see they're written up in Roman numerals because we like to make things harder for you. Each of them have a particular name, some of them are hard to remember. So I like to use a mnemonic, which is a device, a memory device to help you remember the names. This is how I do it. I remember O, 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 to touch and feel very good velvet are uh, heaven. That's my mnemonic. And you can see the first letter of each of those words is going to be the first letter of each cranial nerve. O, 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 to touch and feel very good velvet are uh, heaven. So what are the cranial nerves? First of which is olfactory, then optic, then oculomotor, then trochlea, then trigeminal, then abducens, then facial, then a big one, vestibulo cochlea, which is just as hard to say and spell at the same time, glossopharyngeal, pharyngeal, vagus, accessory, and hypoglossal. So these are the 12 cranial nerves you need to remember. Now the other thing is, some of them are sensory, so they bring information in about the environment. Some are motor, they send information out, and some are both. How do you remember what's what? Another mnemonic. So, some say, marry money, but my brother says, big brains matter most. And you can see it's either S for sensory, M for motor, B for both. Now let's have a look at the function of each of these cranial nerves. So olfactory, sense of smell, you can see it's sensory. Optic, sensory, vision. Oculomotor, motor, movement of eye for ocular, but there's actually three nerves here. Oculomotor, trochlea, and abducens. These three motor, 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 allow for us to move our eyes. Trigeminal is both. So this gives us our sensation of the face and also the ability to move the jaw. We've got facial, which is both. So this is movement of the face now, not sensation, movement of the face and sensational taste of one aspect of the tongue. Vestibulocochlea, this is going to be balance, for example, and it's also going to be sound. Ve uh, glossopharyngeal, glossopharyngeal is going to be, glosso means tongue, pharyngeal means throat. So this is going to be swallowing, but also taste. 
Vegas, which is going to be predominantly what we're going to find. Vegas is number 10, as you can see here. Unfortunately, they don't align properly. Vegas being number 10 is sensory and motor, and this is important because it's the only cranial nerve which goes beyond the head and neck, and it actually innervates the heart, the lungs, the digestive tract, the urinary tract, and so forth. Accessory, shoulders, shrugging, hypoglossal, under the tongue, motor movement of the tongue. And this, this is how you summarize the 12 pairs of cranial nerves. If we have a look at the spinal nerves, firstly, the spinal cord can be broken up into various divisions. So you've got the cervical or cervical, you got the thoracic, you've got the lumbar, you've got the sacral, and you've got the coccygeal. And what you're going to find is there's various num there's a various number of uh, nerves that shoot out and away or come back in at these particular regions. So for example, cervical has eight pairs. Thoracic has 12 pairs. Lumbar, five pairs. Sacral, five pairs. Coccygeal, one. And the way I like to remember this is, this is the time that elderly people tend to like to eat their food. At 8 a.m., at 12 p.m., and at 5 p.m., and then it's five and one. And these are the spinal nerves. Now, interestingly, when we look at the autonomic nervous system, you can subdivide that obviously making things a little bit more difficult for us, but if we were to look at the autonomic nervous system, there's two particular subdivisions. That of the sympathetic and that of the parasympathetic. So, sympathetic, we also term our fight and flight. Fight and flight. This is what gets activated in times of stress. Parasympathetic is rest and digest. This gets activated in times of relaxation. They're the flip side of each other, for example, and they, or their various nerves or fibers that innovate these structures to allow for us to stay alive in times of stress or stay alive in times of relaxation actually branch off either the cranial nerves or that of the spinal nerves. So let's have a look. Firstly, let's have a look at parasympathetic because parasympathetic, their fibers come out of the craniosacral regions. So the parasympathetic fibers are craniosacral, which means they come out of the cranial nerves and the sacral nerves. So let's have a look. What cranial nerves are parasympathetic? Well, they're going to be cranial nerve three, cranial nerve seven, cranial nerve nine, and cranial nerve 10. What these cranial nerves do is they innovate structures that allow for us to promote resting and digesting. For example, Oculomotor. Oculomotor being motor allows for our, for our pupils to contract and relax. And in times of relaxation, what happens is our pupils, they start to constrict. When we have a look at number seven, which is facial. Facial, I said, allows for us to move our face and have taste, but it also innervates our salivary glands, which we need for resting and digesting. Number nine is going to be glossopharyngeal. This is going to be swallowing, swallowing for example, but also salivation of other glands. When we look at Number 10, which is vagus, this structure innervates things like our heart to tell it to slow down, we're relaxing. Our airways constricts a little bit and tells our digestive system to activate and release those digestive enzymes and hormones and so forth to promote relaxation and digestion. They're the cranio aspects of the parasympathetic nervous system and the sacral aspects, which are going to be shooting out are going to be innovating everything basically from the certain part of our digestive system, so our colon, to our urinary tract and renal tract. So I would say parts of our GIT, gastrointestinal tract, and our genitourinary tract. And that's our parasympathetic division. What about sympathetic division? Well, sympathetic division isn't craniosacral, it's thoracolumbar. So the neurons that are shooting out and away from the spinal cord are coming back in for the sympathetic are thoracic and lumbar. 
thoraco, lumbar. And they come out of the thoracic and then the first two lumbar. And again, where are they going? Well, they're going to go to similar structures. They're going to go to our pupils, but this time tell our pupils to dilate. They're going to go to our heart, but tell it to speed up. Going to go to our airways, tell it to relax and open up, get more air in. Why all these things? Because I want you to think about it. Anytime you are fearful or in a stressful situation, what happens to your body? Look into the mirror, pupils dilate. You become pale. Why? Because the blood vessels constrict in your periphery to give blood to all your muscles because you might need to fight or run away. It also goes to other structures. For example, it stops the digestive system because that's not part of sympathetic, that's parasympathetic. All right. So it opens up the airways getting more air in, more oxygen to be delivered to the body. The heart speeds up, delivers more blood around the body to fight or run away. So that's how you should think about these divisions of sympathetic, parasympathetic. But simply put, sympathetic, thoracic and lumbar, all the organs that get activated there to keep you alive in times of stress. Parasympathetic, craniosacral. The cranial nerves are three, seven, nine and 10 and sacral nerves and they get activated to promote resting and digesting. And this is a quick run through of the peripheral nervous system.